in a covalent bond, we've got electrons being shared. So this happens, covalent bonds happen between nonmetals sharing electrons. And so we're going to represent this by neighbor, neighboring atoms sharing some of their valence electrons to get octets. In a metal nonmetal interaction, the metal is willing to give up electrons and the nonmetal is willing to accept the electrons. When you have two nonmetals and they're both trying to get electrons, nobody's willing to give them up. No, I'm not going to give you my sweater, but I'll share it with you, right? So they'll share instead of just giving it up. Let's look at hydrogen and oxygen. So oxygen, how many valence electrons does oxygen have? Six. So there's six. And then hydrogen, how many valence electrons does hydrogen have? It has one. What's going to happen is instead of hydrogen giving its electron to oxygen, or oxygen giving an electron to hydrogen, they're going to share. Hydrogen says, well, I'll share one of my electrons with you if you share one of your electrons with me. And so we can, well, maybe I should make that gray. I don't know. So they're going to share those electrons. So now this hydrogen is happy. The hydrogen counts both of these electrons. Because when you share, it belongs to both of you. My husband and I have six children. If you ask him how many children he has, he'll say six. If you ask me how many I have, I'll say I have six. They're the same six children. There are not 12 children in the house. Thank goodness, there's just not room for that many. So they count for both of us, and these electrons can count for both. The oxygen counts both of the shared electrons as belonging to her, and the hydrogen counts both of them as belonging to him. So hydrogen's happy, but that oxygen isn't happy, right? So we need another hydrogen atom over here. This hydrogen atom is looking for a duet, and so he's willing to share one electron with oxygen, and oxygen's willing to share an electron with him. And so we get another shared pair of electrons. So when oxygen looks at the electrons, it says, I've got two, four, six, eight. I'm good. Excellent. And hydrogen here says two, and this hydrogen says two. Hydrogen's a little guy. He can't handle eight electrons. He's happy with two. So each hydrogen atom gets a duet, the oxygen atom gets an octet, and nobody has to completely give up their electrons. So here's another picture showing how the hydrogen counts both of those electrons that are being shared, the oxygen counts these shared electrons and those, and the two pairs that are not shared for its octet. The electrons that are shared are called a bonding pair. It's a pair of electrons and they form the bond, a bonding pair. The other electrons are lone pairs. So here we've got arrows pointing to the bonding pairs. They're shared between two atoms. Lone pairs are just on one atom. They're not being shared. They're not involved in a bond. They're alone, lone pairs. Sometimes we show the bonding pairs as dashes. That emphasizes that this is a chemical bond. So another way of thinking of that is if we have, if we had our Lewis structure here with our dots. This is like connecting the dots. Let me make that fatter. So the line the line that we see here is the dots connected. So hydrogen had one electron, oxygen had another electron, and we're just connecting those two dots to make a line. The line says this is a chemical bond. 
So in water, we have two bonds and two lone pairs. Hydrogen never has lone pairs. Hydrogen always has one bond. That's all he can handle. He can share his one electron with one other atom, and that's it. He's done. Some of the other elements can share with multiple atoms and form you know, more interesting things than hydrogen can. Any questions? Lewis theory helps us to ex explain why the halogens form diatomic molecules. Remember, horses need oats for clear brown eyes. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine are halogens. They're all diatomic elements. Well, let's look at bromine. How many valence electrons does bromine have? It's got seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is bromine happy? Does bromine have eight? No, we just told you he has seven. So here's another bromine. He also has seven. What could these two guys do to be happy? They could share. So if we connect those dots, if they each share one electron with the other one, then they both have octets. And that's why bromine as an element is Br2, because it's more stable that way. Hydrogen is also predicted to form a diatomic element, and it does. There's hydrogen. There's another hydrogen. They each have one electron. They're trying to get two electrons. Well, if one hydrogen shares with the other one, then they can have two. Hydrogen is also a diatomic element. Any questions? You can share more than one electron. And so let's look at what happens with oxygen. So here's oxygen, and here's another oxygen, because oxygen is one of those diatomic elements too, isn't it? So each of these oxygens has six valence electrons. Well, if they share, if they each share one electron that way, are they both happy? Do they, do they attain the octet that they want? No. What if they share another electron? Now do they have eight? They do, because these bonding pairs count for both. So this oxygen counts two, four, six, eight. This other oxygen counts two, four, six, eight. Counting by two is, is useful for this. So we see that each oxygen atom has an octet because that additional bonding pair counts for both. Well, that's kind of a weird, weird looking molecule. And so we tend to draw it like this. Put those two guys there and they'll have their two lone pairs each. And then, well, that's just too fat. Kind of looks like funny eyes staring at me. But this, this is how we would normally draw it. We would put the two bonding pairs together. When we're sharing two pairs of electrons, that's called a double bond. The single bond is, is sharing a single pair of electrons. A double bond is sharing two pairs of electrons. If you've got a double bond where you're sharing more electrons, it seems reasonable to me at least that that bond is then stronger, right? If you have more in common, if you share more things with another person, the bond between you, maybe your friendship, is going to be stronger and you're going to be closer to each other, right? So these double bonds are, are shorter and stronger than single bonds. If we look at the distance between oxygen nuclei in the double-double bond, it's 121 picometers. If they have a single bond, it's 148 picometers. So we have evidence that they are shorter and stronger. We can also have 
triple bond. So let's look at nitrogen. How many valence electrons does nitrogen have? It's got five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So N2, just these two atoms sharing to get eight. Well, we could share these two, and we could share these two. So now this guy has two, four, six, seven. They each have another electron they could share. So two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. And so we could draw that a little more neatly, like this, a triple line. And then normally you'd put the, uh, the electrons on the far side, but it doesn't have to be there. That's a triple bond, three pairs of electrons being shared. Any questions? Triple bonds are going to be even shorter and stronger than double bonds. So if we look at um, a triple bond for nitrogen compared to a double, 110 versus 124. Nitrogen is a rather unreactive gas. There's a lot of nitrogen in the air. Oxygen is somewhat reactive, but nitrogen is not very reactive. And that has to do with its triple bond, um, that short, strong bond. Each nitrogen atom has an octet. There's not a lot of motivation there for reacting. They're, they're, they're pretty good with each other.